go along with what Josh said, I'd also like to add that uh, that Sunday I went home and posted something, and it was right after the live feed of I think it was CNN was still going, and I said I can't do it anymore no because this reporter that was on there he was saying in this city you can see that this massacre happened to this Baptist church, and it's times like this that the people in the community really gather together. Yeah. They gather all right, but are they gathering in Christ's name, or are they gathering to get, you know, a little talk here, a little talk there, a little show time on TV? That's right. But uh, to go along with what Josh said, if you really are saying that you're going to pray for somebody, if you post it on Facebook, actually mean it. Don't just say, praying for you and say, oh, Lord, be with what he has. Get on your knees and say, Lord. Be with what he needs. Lord, whatever the problem is that's wrong with him, Lord, be with him. And, you know, and sincerely mean it. Because if you don't mean it, and you just say, oh, Lord, be with him. That's like saying, hey, brother, how you doing? <laughs> 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 like, hey, you doing, brother? <laughs> you. No, you're going to go and say, hey, how you doing? I can't wait to see you at church Sunday. Am I right? Amen. I'd also like to say that uh, I want to thank God for Sunday, and I'm not a big, serious guy, but when it comes to behind here, that is the most serious place you can ever be. Right. Right. Because that right there, this is the sanctuary in here. Yeah. That right there, that's where the fire of God's going to rain down. Yeah. Because it, just like the Bible says, it is a two-edged sword. It's going to hurt going in, and it's going to hurt coming out. Because right. Right. as we read it, it's cutting us because we're getting conviction over something we might have done in a while back or something we should, didn't do. That's right. Saying, oh, I'm going to pray for you. And then right before you go to bed, it hits you. Man, I'm going to pray for that one. Then you got to roll out of bed and say, oh. <laughs> and then you finally pray for him. Then you get back up and you feel much better. And you're like, man, I should have done that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Have you ever done that? That's right. Right. That's right. right. The more that you pray for people, the better it'll make you feel and the Better to help somebody else because prayer, prayer is good, but pray and seek for it. Don't just pray once for it and go on. That's right. Pray over and over and over. Right. I want to thank the Lord that my uncle finally did get back in church. Right. Praise the Lord this very day, and I broke down crying last night over it because it's just such a heart moment. And I saw him today, and I said, Lord, thank you. I've never seen him. Just be standing around with such a glow about him. Such, it was like I could see an aura around him. of just so happy. Yeah. And I could just feel that the presence was there. And he said, well, there's Austin. Freshly filled with the Holy Ghost. And I said, yep. <laughs> Freshly tired too. But I'm still <laughs> <ready> to <do." laughs> And I really want to thank the Lord because it's been on my heart for a long time to be in a church that you can have freedom like this. Right. It's, it's not a family church. Yeah, a family goes to this church. Yeah. But there's families that go to many churches. Right. That's right. But we just come out of a church that, you know, you didn't really have freedom like this. Uh -huh. You couldn't just get up and say what you wanted right. without having to fear of what the repercussions were. Right. Bless and I just really want to thank the Lord because that because I've got a big mouth and now since last <laughs> Sunday I've really had a big mouth. <laughs> And uh, just like when you get the Holy Spirit, you get the boldness to do it. That's right. Boldness isn't something that you can just get off right then. you got to pray and be strong in the faith. This year I've had two deathly, deathly threats. One of them was literally face to face. And you know what? I, didn't, I wasn't feared. You know why? Because I knew that if I died, I might have laid on the ground bleeding for a few minutes. But you know what? I could have been like... Uh, Stephen mm -hmm. laid down and went to sleep. Yep. Amen. And when he saw that I wasn't scared, he I could see, and it was almost like a re what he was saying. He was saying, <laughs> Why are you scared? I mean, I heard it. Bing. Shh. I was like, okay. I'm not scared. You know, I've got too much God in me to be scared of something like that. Right. If I know that if you take me out, I'm going on to a better place. Right. I'm going to go get to meet Sam McKenzie. I'm going to go get to meet Brother Bill. I'm going to go get to meet the people that went on before me. 
And I'm going to be shouting on them streets of gold. I might not get to run here, but I can sure run as much as I want there. <laughs> I'm sure going to shout as much as I want there. I'm going to praise God way more than I get to down here. But don't run out there. I might not even be in my mansion much. I might just be running around the streets. Because up there, I might have a holy body. That means I ain't going to be all flooding. <laughs> It's not that we still don't follow the law. 
It's not we don't get stoned by the law. That's right. We don't get killed because we don't follow the law. That's right. We now live under grace. Grace means that if we are to fall, we are to get back up, right. get to the altar, and after we pray and get what we need, we can get back up and go help somebody else. Amen. It's like tonight. It was on my heart <coughs> really heavy tonight to have Connie come up and get prayer. And I know that <coughs> it was God because I can't really get in big crowds, especially, I don't care if it's just little. I don't really like standing up in front of people. And for me to be able to do this, that takes a lot. <coughs> because especially to ask her to come up and pray, that it might not mean much to you, but to me, that's hard. That's something that's right. I can't really do much. I can't really get up in front of a big crowd and talk. I mean, it don't look like it now, but, you know, since last Sunday, I've got a lot of help. <laughs> you know, Amen. Just like Lord. Jesus had help. He had the Holy Ghost. He was it. God, Jesus was the perfect man because of one reason. He did nothing but what God said no matter what. That's right. That's right. Just like when he was in the garden, he prayed until blood come out of him. Yes. Mm. <laughs> you know why? Because he was praying, he said, Lord, God, Father, please. I don't want to have to go through that much pain. But God said, I'm sorry. You have to. Uh -huh. And when he went to that cross, he got beaten. Every single strike that he took, that was for our healing. That was for every type of sickness. A cat of nine tails. 39 spare one. 39 <coughs> cat of nine tails. Multiply that, that's a whole lot of times getting hit. One hit, nine. Two, nine. You add it up, that's a whole lot more than any of us in here could take. Now you might say, I could take them, but are you going to be able to continue to go on? Uh, be able to carry that cross on. Be able to carry, <coughs> just like a song says, carry my cross. I'm going to carry my cross. And I am. I'm going to carry my cross to the finish line. I'm going to get to that finish line. It's right there. And I'm back here like an ox. I just can't wait to get to it. Because when I see that finish line, I'm going to push that much harder. And when I get closer, I'm going to push that much harder. And when I get closer, I get even harder. And the more that I push to get in, the more that I'm going to be able to help other people. Because when I push to get in, then I'm going to see someone back here pushing to get in. I'm going to be like, I'm going to push. I'm going to push. I can see you back there. I'm pushing. Uh -huh. The people that have gone on that are <coughs> with the Lord now, they got to finish their course. Uh -huh. That don't mean that the Spirit got with them. That just means that they got to finish their course. They are right. in the road of the Lord yeah. now. Like the they, get to, <laughs> they get to walk with Jesus. They get to walk with the disciples. Right. When they shoot us, they get to walk with the disciples on the streets of gold. Streets of gold, people. You can see out here, streets of asphalt and yeah. yellow marks. Yeah. Well, you might see all the yellow marks going through, but if you was to see a whole road of nothing but gold, hmm. I believe some people would be running on earth alone because that would be a sight to see. Gold road. And it ain't going up like the earthly gold. It's a heavenly gold. Right? It's a, such a beautiful gold that it Mm -hmm. It's transparent, so you can see through it. And when you see through it, I believe you can't only see through it, but you can see off it. You can look down. Hey. Bless him, Lord. You look up. Well, Lord, a city 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide. Uh, That's a lot of miles. <laughs> and he said that he made it in the perfect way. You know why he made it 1,500 long and 1,500 wide? Because he knew that there was only going to be enough people to fit 1,500 long and 1,500 wide. Because he knew that it ain't going to be a whole thousands of thousands of years of people being Holy Ghost filled, sanctified, staying with the Lord, and nothing else. He knows that there's going to be people that's going to slip, fall, stay down. Because they're going to stay down, they're going to say, I can't get back up. I can't get back up. I'm not going to get back up. Go on without me. When there's going to be some people that's going to say, Come on, I'm pushing, come on. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to say, I can't. I've done too much, I can't. And when they sit there and they finally give up, when they die and they give up, and they realize what they missed out on, they're going to be fighting hard to try to get to that. But you know what? There are going to be angels right there. It's too late. You try to get there, you're going to hell. Uh -huh. It don't matter if you fight 
here on earth like a professional. You can be the world's biggest 50 foot tall, a billion miles <laughs> wide. It don't matter. You're still going to go to hell because yeah. you didn't serve God. Right. You didn't follow what God <coughs> commandment said. Now, yeah, granted, everybody's not always going to follow the commandments perfectly. People in the Bible didn't follow them perfectly, you know. But that's why God <coughs> gives us that's right. the beautiful things in life. Just like knowing the ark. What was God's promise? That He would never flood the earth again. What was His promise? A rainbow. Right. Amen. He said, this rainbow is going to be my promise that I will never kill the earth by water again. That, that doesn't say that I'm never going to destroy the earth again. Here's your rainbow. That says that I'm never going to destroy it by water again. Because yeah. the next time he comes, that water, it's not going to be there. Uh -huh. These oceans, you can swim as far as you want. But that fire, the brimstone of fire is boom. That one. I believe that there's just going to be one that he could drop down just right in the middle of the U.S. And it could blow the whole earth wide open. Right. Because God is God is an all <coughs> being. He is the all seeing eye. Just like these cults have um, on the dollar bill, they have the all seeing eye. Well that all seeing eye ain't nothing. That's just something somebody come up with to try to serve something else. We serve the true living God. That's why it's He's Alive Community Church full gospel. Right. It's not yeah. Half gospel, it's not Psalms gospel, it's not Genesis gospel, it's full gospel. Right. It's the full Bible. We believe in the Holy Ghost. We believe <coughs> that God still heals and He is still healing. People say, I don't see Him healing. What are you doing to help to get with the healing? Are you sitting at home in your couch saying, why ain't you healing, God? Or are you saying, Lord, I need a healing in my land. My land needs a healing. There's many bad things going on. There's many <coughs> Satan, satanic things going on in my land. Or are you saying, Lord, in my land, people that's in it. Come on, maybe the leader. No, I'm not asking too much. God is, He made us for a reason. He made us to, to pray for others. He made us to pray and to seek His face. There's a reason that we don't just get saved and, oh, I see His face. No, it's we pray and seek His face because when we do see His face, we're going to be in heaven because that's going to be our glory to us. That's right. That's going to be the best thing we're ever going to see. And if we have to see it on earth, what will we have to strive for? Amen. What will we have to go on for? What will we have to get to that finish line for? You know, I don't take up too much more time because I know some people got work and some people got kids. But, you know, if we can strive to get to the finish line, just strive for it. The more that you can push and get in there, the easier it is for you to be able to pray for other people to get in. Right. Because you might be back here turning that curve to get to that finish line. And when you get to that curve, there could be four or five people right there that you can help get into God and then they can help you push on. It's not a one-man person. It's not, I'm going to help you get in and you leave me alone. It's, we all work as a team. That's why we're the body of Christ. Right. We're not the limb of Christ. This Pentecostal church over here is the finger. The <laughs> Pentecostal church over there is the hand. It's we're all the body of Christ. Right. That's right. And what is our bodies made out of? If we stand up and do this, what are we? Uh, we're a cross. We are the thing that Jesus went and bled and died on. Yeah, that's right. You know how long and painful it was for him to die on that? To breathe, he had to go up. Splinters going up into him. Mm -hmm. And to let it back out, he had to... Huh. And so when he went down, it was splinters again. So up and down constantly. That's why when he got poked with a spear, it wasn't just blood that come out. It was blood and flowing waters right. that come out. <laughs> and when it made that path... I believe the older soldiers were like, oh, man, we need to go to church now. That's <laughs> <laughs> like the biggest, uh, the biggest bubble in history. They just killed the Savior, but now they can say, I'm glad we did it, because now there's many centuries later, there's still people getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. 
Yeah, we made the biggest uh oh in history, but we also made the biggest ho hallelujah in history ever. Amen. Amen. Because if it wasn't for Jesus dying, there wouldn't have been a day of Pentecost. That's right. That's right. The Holy Ghost would have never got to come down, and the only person that ever had the Holy Ghost would have been Jesus. That's right. Because he said that when he went, he went out of the way to prepare your place, I will send you a comforter. I'm not, he didn't say I'm going to send you a friend that's going to sit by you and then leave. He said, I'm going to send you a comforter. That's something that's going to stick with you and stay with you no matter what. As long as you stay in this fight and stay in this battle, you're going to have the Holy Ghost with you. As long as you stay in the fight for Jesus and don't Amen. back off and say, oh, I'm going to go over here a while and drink a little and go back to church and get forgiveness. Right? No, you're going to stay in the fight because if you back off, you ain't just harming yourself. You're harming the others around you. But if you come in a church, and you might think, oh, I can go out here drink, nobody sees me. They see you in the church, clapping your hand, praising the Lord, right. and you just got done drinking a Jack Daniels or a beer or anything else. What are they going to think of you? They're going to think, oh, hey, I can do the same thing. Yeah. Why do I need to go in there? Right. I'll tell you the reason why you need to come in here, because they're going to hell unless they repent. And you gonna split it wide open too, because if you don't hit the altar and ask for forgiveness, or hit a altar, it's not just the altar here in a church house. You can, right. you can get on your knees anywhere. That's right. You can get on your knees in the middle of Walmart and pray for people. Mm -hmm. I've done it. It don't feel good, but you can do it, and you feel much better after you do it. You know, Amen. it's cold floor, so it does feel pretty good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I just praise the Lord. You know, I just praise the Lord for filling it with the Holy Ghost Sunday. And I praise the Lord for <coughs> what he's doing. And especially I praise him for the message he's gave me. And when I do get to deliver it, I hope to see a big crowd. Not too big, but <laughs> <laughs> big enough to get the word to spread the like seed. Like like now they got one of these. And you can just walk with it. Yeah, amen. You walk yeah. with it. Well, that's just how we need to be with Jesus. We need to walk with it. Grab him by the hand and say, Jesus, I'm holding on. And walk with it. Because if you can walk with Jesus... You can spread the seeds. You can go up, go up and touch them and lay a hand on people and be able to pray for them and see the miracles happen right then if you stay close Amen. to Jesus. Grab his hand and say, I want more of you, Jesus, and I'm not leaving until I get more of you. You're going to get more of Jesus. But that's if you mean it. Not just say, I ain't leaving. Say, I want more of you because I need more of you to do the work.